very nice to meet you. My name is Javier, and I, I would like to talk today a little bit about some projects and ideas that are connected through this thread that Aggie and Daniel have been presented so, with so many interesting ideas. And it's about fashion, technology, futures, and a little bit of um, uh, physically lacking bodies. So before anything, I just want to give you a very quick summary of where I come from. So, as you can see, this is going to be a little bit more focused in the physicality and the building, more than the ideas. And basically, I'm a designer whose primary medium of expression, if you want to put it that way, is electronics and code. And that's to try to influence behaviors and to create experiences to people to live and to um, promote their imagination. So, as an example, this dress that you were seeing there is algorithmically controlled. There were five dresses up here with 20 accessories. This was happening in an old factory in Berlin where people will be normally having their um, dance and their drinks. And then at some point, I could, from my seat, just begin to trigger lasers, begin to trigger things to happen in the space. That will completely change the experience in the night. That will change what people were expecting, and that was merging that reality. In this case, I was uh, being somehow of a DJ. But there are other moments where the behavior of, of the pieces, and this is a bit that I am more interested in, it's not being controlled by me, it's actually controlled by the person who's wearing it. So this is a nice example in which there is a series of sensors and they basically treat the data on how the person, the driver, is feeling while it's driving and it basically displays... It basically displays how the driver and the car are feeling by different um, visuals. So you can see the jacket that the driver is wearing has a series of screens and the more that he so the faster that he drives the more he changes colors it's basically like it's a bit of a different display when you have drive you see the world not for what it is but for what it could be I mean, there are some other nice examples of this kind of um, materials of uh, fashion that is actually adapting to how the wearer is wearing it. This is a project from Studio Rosgarde, which is called Intimacy. And it basically what it does, it's made by a special fabric that can become transparent. 
So also with a series of sensors, the more aroused the wear of the dress is, the more transparent the dress become in a way that will allow for a different kind of interactions where imagine that you are actually approached by somebody that you that makes you feel aroused and basically it reveals a little bit more, maybe a trying to arouse the other person in front of you. <laughs> In just a little bit more about me, in 2013, I began to work in a company called Studio XO as a head of projects. And some of the projects that you see are from that time that I was collaborating with big artists like Lady Gaga. We were also working with people like Arcade Fire. And I am really pleased and really thankful for these kind of people because they are some of the few who actually push the boundaries of these a craft with this technology, it's not that easy to find the resources, the funding, the, the platforms to be able to explore these boundaries, as you may know. I mean, most of the time it's kept very much into the academy. It's extremely, extremely interesting field. But commercially, it, it's just not working that well. I mean, this kind of people who is eager to explore, to have an open mind, and sometimes are hard to reach, but when you actually get <laughs> to work with them, it can uh, make things happen like this. It's, a, it's just like, I don't know if I could call it fashion. There was like a certain, uh, like a certain confusion about that. This was called as the first uh, flying dress. And I guess that if you will put a Coke there, it could be the first flying Coke on it. But it's basically a dress, as you can see, attached to a drone that allowed, uh, in this case, that was also Lady Gaga to fly for the inauguration of one of her albums in New York. From my work, you can see that I am mainly interested in the intersections, in the intersections between technology and between design. And through much of the work that I have done in the area of fashion and technology, I feel that the tech was taking most of the attention. In this kind of like fashion and technology, the, um, at the end of the day, it's completely overwhelmed by that magical possibilities that technology open. I mean, when you arrive to somebody and you saw something that it suddenly like changes color or like changes like its shape, something like that, it basically takes all the attention normally from the more artistic or subtle or fashionable component of it because it's just something that we are not so used to see. So that it takes over completely and when you actually want to deliver, when you begin to build, when you begin to to think about the implementation or so, of something like that. The limitations of current technology are the ones which are limiting us. That's the reason why at some point I stopped doing this kind of work because I was feeling that the technology was still uh, not letting me do what I wanted to do. So I wanted to keep step back and think, okay, I don't want the technology to overwhelm all my work. I want it to be, in a way to call it like low technology, how cool technology, in a way, like even when it's, wear, when it's a wearable technology, when it's integrated with fashion, how cool actually it helps us, encourage us towards enjoying and mastering our capabilities instead of taking over them. So in this case, after doing this kind of work, I did something that goes in this direction, which was basically a compass, a compass that will just point you to the destination. That it, it was just a way of thinking, how can I get away from something like a Google Maps that tells me constantly like where to turn right or left. But one of the main areas, anyway, that I am related to and that I am interested in is, the, um, is how this fashion, how this technology is affecting our society. I mean, currently, when you do a search for fashion and technology, this is what you find. I mean, I'm pretty sure that you have all tried that. And then in our brains, it's, it's this magical idea. It's, it has a lot of power, but when you come and you actually go and confront the reality, you don't really find many more things than sometimes like it like lights up or, or moves a little bit, but it's not something that is actually like gone to the streets. So, but there is obviously a, a growing interest. And with things that gadgets getting more and more uh, uh, miniaturized and getting able to move, we are getting able to move to get in more sophisticated areas. But what we are looking for when we are looking, uh, when we look at fashion and technology is not this. It's something more 
I wouldn't say that. It's something more like this, right? I mean, what we want is not something clunky that keeps us in the flow. We want something that allows us to fly in a way, to like make our imagination, to see ourselves in a different way. Right? This is an amazing project, it's an interactive installation by Chris Milk that you may have heard of it. It's one of my favorite artists ever. It was part of the digital revolution uh, like two years ago, three years ago here in London. And I think that captures very well that feeling that we're looking at when we're looking at this embodied fashion. So it's as being changed. Very, very nice. So, and, and just in the same, in the same road, uh, there was an experiment by the Human Interaction Laboratory from Stanford uh, using virtual reality and augmented reality. So you see here a man who actually looks like Superman. That's what he saw when he was being part of this experiment. There were 30 people, uh, 30 people who were dressed as Superman, that they will actually experience the world, they could fly, they would move things, they will actually be, become Superman in a way. And another 30 people, like, just physically, so they could look at the mirror, there was a mirror in front of them, and they will see themselves as an, as an old person. Well, I mean, you know, you know very well, I mean, the fashion designer, that you know how important it is, how we look at ourselves and how we actually change. Well, through this experiment, using just a virtual reality, they, were, um, they realized that the people who had been uh, looking like Superman was 20% uh, more eager to give back money that they will find afterwards. So they will drop a coin after the experiments. And the people who have been um, uh, looking as Superman, they were much more uh, eager to give back that money than the people that who, who wouldn't. And the people who had become um, an elderly person will take, a, a, on average, a 30% more of time to walk from, their, from the table to the exit of the place. So in a way, that's a very interesting thing, how, how fashion, how this way of looking at ourselves will not only influence our body and how other people look at us, but how we actually look at ourselves. This is one of my favorite photos, and yeah, it's like, <laughs> this is what happens when you look in Google, when you search happy people. So, I mean, like, it, Google already knows like, what happy people should look like, apparently, right? I mean, they're all like, um, there's like the only, there's like, no, there is nothing, nobody who actually looks like too young or too old, like too high, too tall, too low. Everybody like quite a standard. We have grown up understanding people in a way they look in a big way. Not only because of our preconceptions, because also because of our deductions. We need as humans to classify, to make easier for ourselves to understand others. So we quickly normally tend to like, um, put people in like little buckets, right? Uh, this is a person that I may relate more to or somebody who I may not relate that much to. Like personality, social class, ambitions, that all get encapsulated in our aspects. I, I'm really not sure how may actually you may be looking at me right now when I am dressed like this, but uh, we need certain clues to navigate the world. And that's something that technology may actually cause a problem at. For example, what will happen? Something like this. And, and please, I would love to know. Does somebody know actually what that logo is? <laughs> okay, I'm very happy. I mean, I have been looking for people. There is some, not so many people. So this logo actually it comes from a, from a film, which is one of my favorite films. It's Ghost in the Cell. Uh, in Ghost in the Cell, there is this. It's uh, placed in the future, right? Where. Um, Everybody has electronic eyes, so all these uh, big advance, um, advances that Daniel has been uh, speaking about before, where the, imagine like there is like some contact lenses, so you actually get the image that you are seeing around projected in your eyes. Will that what happens when somebody can actually hack into that system and just yes, basically change the way you look, right? I mean, this is a little bit the case actually in that in that film where there is a person who is completely untraceable. And right now, technology is beginning to allow us to do things. I mean, this took me like a day or something like that. 
was not really something complicated. And as time goes on and on, this is going to be easier and easier and easier. So um, it, it's not that far when we begin to see the world through this new lens of technology. And with that, with the good things, will also come the bad things. There is another very, very nice example that I just, I just found today. So I was just like dropping it in from a stock. They just did it. And <laughs> you can see how like all the people is filtered out. Right? People who may not be happy or may like, look in a different way. You can see there. <laughs> so, yeah. And speaking about that, yes to wrap up. This is uh, one of the main uh, interesting things that I am finding from the virtual reality and from the um, virtual um, augmented reality. How do we look at ourselves, how other people look at ourselves, how we may be um, appealing to other people, like our co-workers may see us in a different way that um, the, our friends or our family, we may be able to even like project a different uh, being to different people in not so long in time, what will happen then? And our role as designers will be very important there. I mean, right now is, um, it's an area that is completely controlled by, by people who is more technologically savvy, I will say, but they, de they do really need a lot of help in general as any other like technologist or designer from the rest of the community in order to build these systems because they are going to be built. I mean, it's not something that is never going to happen. And it's very important to be there with the good ideas when that happens so things don't go wrong. Thank you.